St. Joseph on Loch Derg, the man who goes unnoticed. Sunday the 9th of July 1882 saw a unique occasion on Loch Derg. On that day, Archbishop John James Lynch of Toronto, a native of Clonus Parish in Clare Diocese, and himself a former pilgrim to the island, ordained two All Hallows seminarians to the priesthood, Charles Hegarty for Toronto and Andrew Cassidy for Wellington in New Zealand. 1882 was also the year that saw the opening of the first hostel building on the island. Since extended and refurbished more than once, it is still in use today as the men's hostel. The occasion that Sunday was further marked by the blessing of the statue of Our Lady of Loch Derg, familiar to our pilgrims. In his sermon, the Archbishop hoped that statues of St. Patrick and St. Joseph would follow. Over the following years, Bishop James Donnelly of Clogher, who was present that day, was engaged with the world-famous marble workshops at Carrara in Italy to source statuary for St. McCartney's Cathedral in Monaghan, which was then nearing completion. He commissioned the two statues suggested for Loch Derg by Archbishop Lynch, and these were unveiled and blessed on the 4th of July, 1891. Statues of Our Lady and St. Patrick seem reasonably obvious for Loch Derg. But the statue of St. Joseph was part of a widespread devotional movement that followed Blessed Pius IX declaring St. Joseph patron of the Universal Church on the 8th of December 1870. The October devotions that included the Rosary and Pius IX's prayer beginning to thee, O Blessed Joseph, we have recourse, were part of the same movement and became widely practised in homes and in parishes. In our present year of St. Joseph, Pope Francis marks 150 years since that declaration, and he makes clear in his letter, Patris Corde, that his intention is, quote, to increase our love for this great saint, to encourage us to implore his intercession, and to imitate his virtues and his zeal. The fine statue of St. Joseph now attracts little attention on Loch Derg. It gazes over the barefooted pilgrims as they make their station prayers on the penitential beds and as they pass to and from the basilica, but few of them think of pausing before it in prayer. In some ways this is completely fitting. In Patris Corde, Pope Francis describes St. Joseph as the man who goes unnoticed. And in another place he adds, he never made himself the centre of things. It is still unclear to what extent Loch Derg will be able to welcome pilgrims this year, but to me it is very clear that part of our mission at this time is to share with our pilgrims and friends the Pope's invitation to a renewed awareness of St. Joseph's quiet role in our lives and in the life of the Church. We can all only benefit from nurturing a warm devotion to this silent saint who played such a formative role in the human life of Jesus and who has been a significant role model for Jorge Bergoglio, now Pope Francis, both as a man and as a priest. Saint Joseph, pray for us.